Hey guys, welcome to Tectric's tutorial. Today, we are going to talk about Leonardo AI image to image Leonardo AI tutorial. It is a step by step guide to follow easily. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So let's dive right in. Before we proceed onto our step by step guide, you'll just need to head first onto the website of Leonardo.ai. So search this onto your local browser until you land onto this website. And this is what the website looks like. And just a quick overview if you're not familiar with this, this is actually a cutting edge artificial intelligence platform that is developed by OpenAI. So it leverages powerful machine learning models to manipulate and generate images, making it possible for users to create visual content. So as you can see in here, you can unveil new creative horizons with fine-tuned models. So these are the different fine-tuned models that we have in here. And also among its many features, one stands out. It is the ability to transform images, add artistic filters, and generate personalized content, all with a remarkable ease. So in this tutorial, you will learn how to use an image as a reference onto your own image generation in Leonardo AI, and you can go ahead and create a fun and personalized images using your reference. And for us to be able to get started, since you're already onto the website, you could go ahead and simply click on to create an account. So creating an account in Leonardo is easy. You don't need any credit card needed and it is completely free. So you'll get redirected onto this page once you've clicked onto that and to sign up or log in, you'll have many options. You could use your Apple account, Google account, and Microsoft account, or you could just simply type in your email password and if you have already an account and you have forgotten the password you could click on to forgot your password sign in and if you need an account sign up and this is also available already onto ios so you could use this onto your phone and you could see the privacy policy in terms of service here onto the bottom part now usually what i try to do onto every website is just try to use my google account so let's try to click onto that since i don't have to type in my email or password i'll just gonna go ahead and try to click onto the account that i want to use so this is the dashboard. So you could see the featured models in here. We've seen this onto the website earlier. As you can see, there are a lot of featured models in here. So these featured models that we have in here is what you'll use as a reference onto your generation. So if you want to see your photo looks like a cute animal character or onto a vintage style, you could go ahead and click onto these featured models so that you could change also the style. So if you want to generate something like a pixel art, you could use this. Or if you want to do some character portraits, you could use this. So here onto the bottom part you can see the recent creation done by other users you could also see the prompts that was used so that you could copy that one out or just revise it so that you could generate almost the same so you could see, use the search bar in here but this is not available as of the moment right now you could filter from all to upscale the trending new and top now here onto the left side you could see the different tokens that you have on your account so this is what you'll use onto your content generation and if you need more for this it will actually just generate up to an hour so you'll just have to wait for that but you'll just have to click on to upgrade if you want to do more since we're just using the free plan so you could choose here the plan that is tailored to your needs you could pay up to yearly or a monthly the free plan is free forever but it is just for only 150 fast generations per day we could also upgrade to apprentice artisan maestro if you want to do more generations onto your account so you could just go ahead and scroll down to view the different plan details and what are the features that it offers and if you want to use this you'll just have to subscribe to it and then you could go ahead and switch also to monthly billing for that now let's head back to the dashboard now you could also see the community feed in here when you could actually see it already again in here onto what we've seen into home the different generations done by other users so you could use this as an inspiration you also have your own personal feed when you could see your own generations onto your account you could also see the prompts that you have used so that if you want to reuse them you could just copy it again the followers feed if you have followed someone and the like feed if you have like some photos of others so we also have the training and data sets in here where you could go ahead and train your own model so that you could use it as a reference so this would work best if you want to use your own image onto your own image generation so we also have the fine tune models in here you could see the community models that are models that were made by other users, your own models that you have generated, and the favorite models that you have. 
Now you can see the user tools as well, such as the AI image generation, AI canvas, texture generation, API access settings, that can help in logout. And for us to be able to get started, just simply click onto AI image generation in here to start generating our own content. So this is what I've generated earlier. So let's try to do a new one. So this is where you could type in your prompt or what you want to see onto your photo. You could also add in some negative prompt or the things that you don't want to see onto your image. So we could also choose a fine tune model in here. So we've discussed this one already earlier. So let's try to use character portraits since I want to generate something like a character now, we could choose a style, add in some elements in here. Now here onto the left side, you should be able to see your tokens and you could also choose how many number of images will be done per generation. We also have different features of the Nardo in here, such as the photo reel, alchemy, prompt magic v2, public images, and image dimensions. So you could just activate this by toggling this on and you could also see the image dimensions in here. So you could choose different dimensions. You could also customize your own or you could choose from the different aspect ratio. We also have the guidance scale in here. So this is how strongly your prompt is weighted. So you have a prompt already in here. You could use this guidance scale in here. You could have it higher so that it will really use your text prompt as a reference in here. You also have the control net with, wherein it will allow you to influence your generation with input images and the tilling ideal for repeating textures or background. So this is the feature that we're going to do today, which is the image to image. So for you to be able to use this, you will just need to upload or drag and drop an image to use as an input so i have a photo that i've downloaded from the internet so i'm just gonna go ahead and drop it in here to use this as a reference now as you can see i've already added the photo in here so it is actually still loading as of the moment right now and if you've noticed there is another feature that has popped up so this is the in its trend so the higher this will be it will preserve the original image and more so if you have this up to 0.7 it will preserve the image that we have used as a reference and here more so we could just try to have this at 0.4 but we could go ahead and try to experiment later on or we could go, go ahead and try to change this like that so that we could get some different generations as well now let's go ahead and type in a prompt already to try this one out so we'll try to make out something that is a character like onto the photo that we have in here since it views the character portrait as our fine tune model so we're gonna go ahead and try to type in a prompt in here and the instance prompt it is highly recommended that we'll need to incorporate this instant prompt within our prompt for better stylistic consistency with the data to set this model was trained on so let's go ahead and copy that one out and add it in here onto the prompt now so you can see i've added in here in a majestic waterfall cascades down a lush forest creating a symphony of crashing waves and soothing sounds sunlight filters through the canopy casting a magical glow on the sparkling water droplet so we'll try to have something like a background in here with a waterfall so let's not use the negative prompt first since we'll try out something first in here before we could go ahead and try to adjust some settings in here so we'll leave this as 0.36 and then we'll try to see what it will give us for five tokens now here are the photos that it has given us so i don't think the model that we've chosen which is the character portraits is really fit onto some generation for this one so we'll try to change the model that we have also try to readjust the init strength in here and let's just try to see what it will give us. Now, as you can see, I've tried to change the fine tune model to Dream Shaper and then the init strength to 0 0.32. And let's try to make some adjustments as well onto the prompt in here so that Leonardo would really be able to get what we want to convey onto our text prompt in here. So the first prompt that we have is not really that focused on to what we want to deliver. So let's try this one out, a more specific one. So in a majestic waterfall cascades down a lush forest, casting a magical glow with flowers and butterflies. So let's try this one out onto what it will give us. We'll just click on to generate and let's wait for its generation. Now, as you can see, here are the photos that I generated. So you could see a little waterfall onto the back and it still retained the same background that we have of a pink one. So you could see the butterflies as well. Some flowers in here and as you can see we have this one as well so i kind of like how this one turned out let's try to adjust the inner strand in here so that let's try to see what it will give us i've adjusted this lower so that it will not really that preserve the message board and let's higher the guidance scale so that it will go ahead and try to base the generation onto the prompt that we have added and let's try to click on to generate 
Now, as you can see, here are the new batch of photos that it generated. So it really defined more the, the waterfalls that it have onto the back. You could also see the butterflies in here, some flower tree in here, and you could also see it onto the other one. So I kind of like how this one turned out. So if you're actually satisfied already, you'll just have to click onto the photo. You'll have the option to delete it. If you don't like it, download the image. You could copy this. You could actually unzoom it. You could remove the background and there are many more options in here. So you could do the same thing onto the other photo that we have in here so i kind of like how this turned out as well so once you're already done or if you're still not yet satisfied you could just go ahead and try to readjust some things in here until you've gone ahead and seen what you want to you want to have onto your generation and that's just basically it on how to use the image to image feature onto leonardo ai and if you think this tutorial was helpful to you don't forget to hit the like subscribe and if you have any question don't hesitate to comment it down below thanks for watching and we'll see you onto our next video